Hi everybody, we're streaming live now. So um, Dr. Ines here with me. Hello everyone. Okay, so we're here to answer any more questions that you might have. So hit us up with those questions and I'll do my best, yeah? Just remember that there may be some questions that might be better to take to a private message or, or direct contact just because they're too specific, yeah? But I'll, maybe we can ask trans, translate them to something more general for you. All right, um, let's go to some questions. So the first question is, how much exercise should we do? So this is something we usually talk about very early on in the program. Um, so exercise is obviously really important. It's wonderful for fitness and wellness and, and your metabolism. And um, it, it, it's, it has so many benefits other than um, something that can be used for weight. Um, interestingly, uh, people who try and exercise to lose weight will often not lose weight, um, mainly because if you imagine you're cutting your calorie intake and you're trying to lose weight and then you try and run on a treadmill or, or do some intense exercise, well, your brain will quite rightly say, no, that's not going to happen. You're going to have to give me more food. Um, and so it, it can drive hunger. So um, how you exercise makes a difference and your intention of the exercise makes a difference. So what we say is exercise, but exercise for wellness and feeling good about yourself and, you know, enjoying what you're doing and, um, you know, producing happy hormones because your, your brain is happy to um, give up fat for those happy hormones. It's not going to be happy for you to try and lose a lot of weight and put a lot of stress on the body. So um, how much should you do? Well, look, we focus on incidental activity, incidental exercises, um, uh, stretching, resistance work, because that all builds up muscle mass and helps with metabolism. So do fun things, stay active, do things that you enjoy, do lots of walks. Um, you don't have to go and hit treadmills, you don't have to tie yourself out, listen to your body and do what your body asks. And if it if it's tiring to do exercise, slow down, build up gradually. As you start losing weight and you're carrying less kilos, it's much easier to exercise and you get a lot, a lot more out of it. And so you can start increasing it as you lose more and more. Um, so it's just riding the wave properly. Okay, um, next question. What's the best way to measure if I'm in ketosis? This was asked by Esther. And should I worry about this or focus on learning about low carb foods? Hi. So yes, ketosis is such an important part of our program. So we understand that ketosis is a, is a natural appetite suppressant. So we use it. We don't use intense ketosis as we talked about before, but any low level ketosis is wonderful to try and reduce that drive to hunt and search for food. Um, but we don't actually go looking for ketosis. And the main reason is that the, the main keto ways of testing is urine tests and, and finger prick tests. And certainly the urine test isn't that accurate. Um, and the finger prick test is hard to get and expensive. And the issue for us is we don't really care if you're in ketosis if you're not hungry. So if you come to the clinic and say, look, um, I'm not hungry, I'm eating all this food and I'm having those, um, I'm using a very low calorie diet, but I, I, I'm coping with it well. Um, and I'm losing weight, well then don't check. Why would you need to know? It makes no difference to us. If you say I'm doing everything perfectly, I'm eating ultra low carb, but I'm still hungry, then it may be worth checking if you're on keto ketosis just to prove there's nothing that's sneaking in that's sabotaging it. Um, in, in practice, we trust. And if you're eating properly and you're still hungry, then, then low level ketosis isn't uh, suppressing your appetite enough. And it may just be that we need to use more. And we, we obviously start talking about medications at that point. Um, so, so ketosis is, is important, but we recognize that because we don't use high level ketosis, meaning we don't do those intense, very Atkins diets, we use low level ketosis. It can be below the levels that you might notice on urine tests. So my advice is don't bother and focus on not being hungry, eating generously, eating um, good quality food. So it's all about the quality of the food as unprocessed as possible, keeping it low carb, but having it very nutritious um, and filling yourself regularly and not sort of um, fall into the traps of, of, of feeling hungry because your body's worried you might not give it enough nutrition. So give it enough and you'll be fine. In our next question. All right. So the next question is how to prevent self-sabotage. And there's another question as well asked by Judy. Can you actually slow or damage your metabolism by eating low calorie? I'm finding one indulgence will undo my hard work. My weight gain is out of proportion with what I may have eaten or had to drink as a one-off. Wow, really good question. So look, metabolism is an interesting concept because metabolism is just what it is. It's it's the uh, the burning of the energy in your body. You can't damage your metabolism. Your metabolism just does what it needs to do. 
Um, so, but your brain uses metabolism and it's quite clever in that you could be eating exactly what I'm eating and doing the same exercise and yet you'll put on weight and I won't. And that shows the difference in metabolism that'll affect whether you can lose or gain weight. And the way I think of it is that your brain has powerful defense system. And one of those is it can manipulate your metabolism so that you become far more efficient, make it far harder to lose weight no matter you're putting a lot of effort into it. So that's a real frustration for people. Um, so the question that we always get is, okay, I'm doing this really well and I'm losing weight and that's good. But if I cheat once, even just a little bit of a cheat, I put on a lot of weight. It's like, well, if that's going to happen when I stop this and try and eat a normal, normal diet, how am I going to keep my weight off if my body's going to rapidly put it back on again? And so it's a difficult one because there's no clear clear answers to, to what's going on there. But in, in principle, if you're trying to lose weight and you're telling your brain, I'm losing weight and, and you're losing weight and it's putting a lot of pressure and stress on your control systems, um, the moment it gets, gets a chance to put the weight back on, it does it aggressively. So it's like saying, right, fine, we're going to put it up quickly and, and bad luck because you're doing this to us and we're not going to let you do this. The brain I'm talking about speaking to yourself. Um, so you find that small cheats in our program will often lead to big rebounds and that can be frustrating for people. Um, but interestingly, once you decide you've reached your target weight and you're not going to lose that weight anymore, once you've said to yourself, I'm not going to lose weight, I'm happy where I am, it shifts. Your brain says, well, if you're not going to do that to us, it's fine then. And this drive, this sudden weight gain from eating normal food just doesn't seem to happen in that way. And it doesn't work for everybody, obviously, but we find the majority of people who lose weight confidently get to their target weight and then move from a calorie restricted diet to a generous diet, which suddenly feels overwhelming because you've gone from eating very little calories to significant calories. The brain goes, wow, that's a lot of food. Thank you. And you're not trying to lose weight. Brilliant. And so all of a sudden, that, that constant pressure to raise your weight again just stops and the whole thing kind of slows down. We think that's how it works and hopefully that's the way it'll work for you. Um, speak to your doctor and get them to help you through that phase because it is difficult and sometimes we just need to tweak your medications and, and try other techniques. Even sometimes taking a break to rest yourself will, will actually help. Um, Ina, next question. All right, so this is a question from Anna. She's actually asked for the about the medication Sixenda, and she says, I can't figure it out. Does it affect metabolism? Some days the weight literally falls off, and I have eaten the same, and I did when I wasn't on it and didn't lose weight. I find it puzzling. So she's saying, you know, Sixenda will, um, does it affect metabolism or not? And some days she can lose the weight easily, whereas other days it doesn't work. All right, let's talk about Sexenda. And, and before I talk about Sexenda, that point you raise about how sometimes your weight doesn't reflect what you do is very interesting and, and, and often a great source of frustration. Um, people say, I did exactly the same the last few days and I weighed myself, nothing happened. And I cheated one day and my weight came down. It, it makes no sense. And so, um, I think trying to link your weight to behave, day to day fluctuations of weight to behavior is fraud. And it's it's a source of great frustration and, and it never seems to match. So we actually discourage you to weigh yourself and try and do a cause and effect. It's better not to stress yourself and stress your brain because any stress will um, trigger defenses and hunger. It's actually better to weigh yourself less. You weigh yourself once a week and look at the big picture and the trend. Trying to work out day to day fluctuations, practically impossible. Fluid shifts, bowel function, metabolic shifts, um, um, absorption in intestines, uh, different um, uh, types of foods affecting different ways, mood, um, for w women with hormonal changes and premenstrual, postmenstrual, these things all completely affect weight. And so why bother? Don't stress yourself. Just weigh yourself on a regular sort of weekly basis would be fine and, and trust in that. Okay. Uh, Sexenda, we really like. And um, yes, it's a drug and yes, there are risks. But um, the reason why we like Sexenda is that it is actually a replacement of a hormone or, or neurotransmitter that, that we naturally make, um, but people who are overweight and losing weight don't make. And this particular neurotransmitter, it's called GLP-1, it's secreted by the intestines, it goes to the brain and says to the brain, guess what? We're good. Don't Send any more food down. We're happy. Settle down. And it goes to the stomach and says, stomach, slow down. You, you're sending too much stuff down. We don't need so much. Um, it's okay. We're, we're good. Um, and so this is supposed to go to the brain and the brain listens and, and switches off hunger. And unfortunately, if you don't make that, the brain's constantly hunting. The stomach's con continuously um, shedding food down, all in the attempt to try and regain some weight back. So by giving you this from the outside as an injection, 
uh, injected under the belly, it, it works quickly and it goes directly to the stomach and tells it slow down and all of a sudden you feel full. Sometimes you get constipation because of that, but you know, you can fix the constipation. And it goes straight to the brain, it crosses the blood-brain barrier, speaks directly to the control center and tells it it's okay. Now, because it tells the brain it's okay, the, the control center of the brain, it's called a arcuate nucleus, it's in the hypothalamus, because it talks directly to the control center, all of a sudden, the defensive systems settle down. So yeah, it will affect your metabolism because the brain no longer manipulates your metabolism to try and um, preserve weight. It affects um, motivation, mood, it, it can affect your um, confidence, it, it just stops you craving things, uh, These are because it's working directly on the things that the brain does to stop you losing weight. So the brain has four wonderful mechanisms to stop you losing weight. It, it, it raises your hunger hormones, it, it drops your satiety hormones, so you just feel hungry all the time even though you've eaten it. It, it changes the metabolism, so you know you, you exercise and, and do exactly what the next person is doing and yet you don't burn any energy, right? You're just hoarding it. You know, I could eat a burger after my exercise and nothing happens and you eat a chip and you store it. It's just that's the way your brain's going to compensate. And the sneakiest way the brain does this is it, it works directly on your emotional centers, your comfort centers, your addiction centers, all, all designed to try and manipulate your behavior to change the way you feel and think and, and crave things. And, and that leads to the other question that was asked is how do I stop sabotaging myself? And I think the simplest way is to say it's not me that's sabotaging, it really is the powerful defense systems. And unless we can find out ways to overcome those defense systems, Hello, you'll keep sabotaging. <laughs> Yeah. So, sorry, relax. Um, so it can get very frustrating when you keep trying, trying, and then you feel guilty and ashamed, and why can't I try harder? And it's important to recognize that trying hard is not the problem. People try hard. People have good willpower and motivation. It's just you're overcoming really powerful primitive defense systems. And so eating behavior, uh, eating generous amounts of low calorie, good quality food, um, using medications, uh, low level ketosis, some good fun exercise, all these contributes to try and help. Um, again, for specific problems, go to your doctor, hold them down and say, you said you could help me. What are you going to do about these cravings? What are you going to do when I keep sabotaging myself? Because that is their job to help you with, yeah? Next question and last question. This I is think. the last question. So Cassie has asked, it is my birthday yeah. month and it's my birthday month too. And watching... Uh, and wanting to take a week or two off Sixenda, do I know whether it would be okay to take the time off and start up back on the same dose I, or I have to start right from the beginning? All right, Cassie, happy birthday and happy birthday, Aina, as well. Look, um, these are really good questions. And I think um, the, the thing about Sexenda is that it, over time, yes, of course, we raise doses and, and most people will need higher and higher doses the longer they're on it. And that's okay because you've got to remember the brain starts recognizing and compensating and, and we don't mind that. It seems sensible. Um, there is the option of adding a second drug to the Sexenda. We sometimes do that for people who are finding they're getting a bit of resistance to the Sexenda. Sometimes it might mean even changing the drug and then changing back because, yes, when you stop Sexenda for some time, your body loses its tolerance to it. And I find, and we often find, that people who stop Sexenda for a while can't go back to their, the doses they stopped at. They have to actually start at a lower dose because if they start at the high dose, they feel really sick. And it seems like it's like as if they've never had it before. So um, go low and or lower. And rather than go up really slowly, like we recommend weekly dose ups with Sexenda, you can go up um, a bit quicker. You can go up like start at 0.6 and then go up to halfway after a few days and then a few, a few days more and just trust yourself, play with it. The truth is you can't harm yourself if you have too much, you'll just feel sick. Um, so play with it, be comfortable, be confident with it and you'll be fine. Yeah. And really important to take a break for important milestone. So birthdays, anniversaries, proper holidays, when well, we have them in Victoria, um, the um, uh, Christmas, Easter, whatever. What, you have to live. You have to have important times that your brain, your brain's never going to let you lose weight if everything has to stop. So you say to yourself, I'm allowed a break. This next few days, I'm going to settle down. I'm going to have some extra treats. Look, try and eat as well as you can. Eat lots of extra protein, have lots of vegetables and fiber, and, and then have your treats as well. And take that break and know that who cares? If you gain some weight, as long as you know how to re-lose it, you've done beautifully. Because our philosophy is that it's not losing weight that's important. It's confidently re-losing weight that's important knowing that you can always use the things that you've learned, the tools that you have, the medications if you're on them, to re-lose weight whenever you want to because you'll have to. When you finish the program, you'll gradually start putting on weight and every once in a while you'll have to fix it. And practicing that during the program is great. So take a break on the birthdays, gain a couple of kilos, you're not going to care, it was worth it, then fix it. And if you can fix it, you win. All right, I hope that was useful, guys. 
was great chatting. We'll do this again sometime. Give us any feedback. And um, if you have any more questions, you've got all got doctors who are more than happy to help you. And any general questions that put up here and we can try and answer them too. Okay. Bye nice everyone. Enjoy you. your Saturday afternoon and we'll see you at work again on Monday. Bye. Bye.